All right. Well, welcome to this evening's webinar featuring activities from one of the NASA Night Sky Network's outreach toolkits. NSN Outreach Toolkits come in boxes that usually look like this. I think that a lot of you have probably seen these things. And they contain Ziploc bags filled with a variety of materials and you know, it looks like these. And sometimes it's kind of a mystery about exactly what it is that are in these. Your astronomy group may very well make regular use of these or they're unused on a shelf somewhere. And it's even possible your group may have an entire set of toolkits that no one knows about. Um, and so our goal here is to help you make use of what you already have or what you might have in the future as you log events and add to your collection of toolkits. I know that we have a number of these. And so if you don't have this one in your stash and you log enough events, you might want to think about getting this one uh, for your next quarterly um, what do we call it? Rewards or yep. rewards? Yeah, absolutely. If you yeah. log two events in a quarter, you get a new toolkit automatically, but you can always request one if you have one in particular you'd like. Yeah. And research has shown that educators, and all of you are educators when you engage your membership and the public in your various events, will make better use of resources when they receive some professional development in their use. So that's what we're doing here. So this webinar is featuring activities from the Our Galaxy, Our Universe Toolkit. You can also find them on the Night Sky Network website. And I will put the um, link to that up there. So over the next half hour or so, these are not designed to be nearly as, as long unless we really end up having a really nice conversation. Uh, we'll show you a few of the activities from the toolkit as well as give you a chance to share how you've used the toolkit and or how you engage your members and or the public in learning more about the scale of the various realms of the universe. During this time, we will have to shift our perspective in order to fit everything into a scale that we can visualize, a challenging task for many visitors to events. And we'll chat about that a little bit at the end as well and find out some things that you've done to be able to help people to do that. So I'm gonna kind of, uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. If I can figure out where it is. <laughs> All right. So what we're doing is we're taking a look at the Our Galaxy, Our Universe um, Outreach Toolkit. And there's the uh, a link that you can get to. I put this in the chat window as well so that you can just directly link it. And, uh, and so all these resources are also on the Nice Gun Network website, as well as in the toolkit. And so if you do go to the website, you'll see this to, at that link. And, and Vivian did a really nice job of collecting all these and making sure that they're in one place with all of the names so that it's uh, fairly evident what it is that you're looking for. And so this is what you find. And then you can get to each of these activities, as well as the full manual that comes with the toolkit that's actually inside the toolkit. So one of the things that, that I like to do, I don't know what that red mark <laughs> ended up being, that's kind of a stray mark. And so one of the things that's really kind of fun to think about is, you know, here's kind of a, a question that you don't know what, uh, um, you know, what we're doing, but birdseed, birdseed's kind of an interesting thing. And so what we want to do is we want to think about how many bird seeds you think there are on this piece of paper. I hope that red thing is throughout this entire, um, it might be there. Very well, we'll, might we'll, be. we'll have to see. <laughs> so here we've got a bunch of bird seed. And so in the chat window, just kind of jot down how many bird seed you think there are. Now, if you're doing something like this at one of your outreach events, sometimes things get spilled. And so I actually like these little plastic lids for being able to keep these from, um, you know, the bird seed from straying too far. Okay, so we got some good <laughs> guesses. We got 250, 150, 100, 279, 90, 135. So we've got kind of a wide range of uh, Guesses here, 160. I think some of these people may have done this actually. 300. Oh, I'm sure that they. I'm, I'm sure that they have. Good guesses. Uh, 125. So these are some really great guesses on how many that there are. Well, we're not going to tell you how many there are right now, but it looks like uh, we're kind of averaging. What do you think? About 150, 170, 200, 200, maybe. make it round. 
<laughs> so we're, we're averaging, you know, that we have a much larger range, of course. But that's always kind of a, uh, it, it's kind of good to get, give people a sense of, you know, what it means to estimate things. And so this kind of goes to this idea that when you look up at the night sky and you say, well, how many stars can we see when we look up at the sky? And, you know, contrary to what, uh, you know, people say, it's not billions and billions that we can see. It's not millions of, of stars that we can see when we look up at the night sky. It's actually a fairly limited number, which always surprises people um, that it's a very, very small number of stars that you actually see when you look up at the night sky. And so some of you might have, you know, a pretty good idea. And so just, you know, again, let's, uh, you know, toss out there in the chat window about how many stars can we see with our unaided eye when we look up at night? We got 9,000, 6,000, 2,000, 10,000, 3,000, 3,000, thousands. So, you know, we're, we're talking about in the range of several thousands. And I think that what uh, they say is that there's about 6,000 stars total that are available to us to see by the, with our unaided eye, which means that, you know, you can only see maybe about half of them at any one time. So right around three to 4,000 stars on any given night that we could look up and count. And so, but it certainly looks like it's a whole lot. So one of the things that we want to think about, boy, that is really obnoxious. That, that little <laughs> red thing is just showing up all the time. We're just going to have to live with it, I think. So, Hmm? Yeah, fix it. If you want to talk, um, go for it. Yeah. Okay. So, so one of the things that we want to think about here is, so you know, I'm watching what you're doing. You just keep talking. Um, well, I wanted my slides though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. All right. There it went yes, away. Yes. Thank you. Carry on. Okay. So <laughs> what we want to do is we want to think about what our place is in our galaxy. And so this is kind of one of the core activities in the our galaxy our universe um, outreach kit and so we think about where we are in our galaxy and so kind of what's the difference between where we are and what we're thinking about with the galaxy what's the difference between all these things so we've got the solar system oh and this powerpoint is actually in um, one of the re uh, resources that are that's in the kit and also on the website so you can get these slides uh, from there so what's the difference? And so here we've got our solar system where everything that we know is down there in the middle. You know, we really don't know a whole lot more besides what's out there, besides the little bit that we can see with our telescopes. And then we have the galaxy. And then we can think about the broader universe. And so we kind of have these three realms that we could think about, the solar system or galaxy, then the universe as a whole. But the solar system fits into this small part of the galaxy. And then the galaxy fits into a very small portion of the universe. And so we've got kind of a scale challenge here of being able to move from the everyday things that we experience to these things that are very, very large. To us, the solar system is very, very large. And yet it's a very, very small part of the greater galaxy. So let's think about where our solar system is within our galaxy. So here we've got our galaxy with all the visible stars, gas, dust, and we're located right about there. And so one of the things that we might want to think about is, you know, here we've got all the different planets that are in the solar system. We've been to many of them. NASA missions have explored all of them at this point, and which is a pretty remarkable thing that we can say that today that every single one of these objects in, I guess, the traditional solar system have been visited by NASA missions. We have great imagery uh, of all of these. So we have a much better idea of what's going on there. And so if we take this, and if we took our solar system that we're familiar with and shrunk it to the size of a quarter, and so we all have a pretty good notion of how big a quarter is, like an inch, inch wide, something like that, let's see, they can't really see us holding this up <laughs> so, because they see the slides. So, right. um, we'll, we'll pull that out as a, as a prop. But it's always good when you're engaging people to have a quarter um, as a prop just to remind people about how big they are. So we're taking the solar system. You know, it took years to get out to Pluto. 
And it's taking even more years for the Voyager spacecraft. They've been out there for what, 40 years, something mm -hmm. like that. And they're just, you know, one of them's just recently um, left the solar system, the official edge of the solar system is out into interstellar space. And so if we shrink that down to the size of a quarter, we want to think about how big the Milky Way galaxy is. And so we got that quarter. So what do you think? You know, some of you have done this before. And so what's your recollection or what's your sense on the scale of our solar system as a quarter? How big would we need to represent the Milky Way galaxy on that same scale? How big would we need? Linda knows. She's done this a few times. Yeah, I think David's done this <laughs> too. So North America, yeah. coast to coast. So that's a pretty remarkable thing, that on this scale, the Milky Way is the size of the continent. And so basically, we're talking 100,000 light years across. And so if we think about that one inch representing five and a half light hours, that's the size of our quarter, sun to Pluto. And so now we need to have basically 100,000 inches. And so one mile on this scale would be 40 light years. And so we need 2,500 miles to represent those 100,000 light years. That's really remarkable that we can scale this. And so here we've got the continent of North America. And so that's how big we need to be able to put our galaxy coast to coast. And our solar system is one little quarter of where it was located in there before. I think it was right around Reno on this uh, particular uh, <laughs> map where you could, uh, well, you can't put quarters into the machines anymore. They, uh, you have to put paper money or, or vouchers. So I guess that's not a very good analogy anymore. We so lost it. <laughs> we lost it. Oh, but we're having fun. So that's <laughs> exactly. So this is a really remarkable thing. So the other thing that we want to consider is how thick our galaxy is. And so it's about a thousand light years thick. And so on our scale that we were talking about 40, uh, light years to the mile. Um, and so that would mean that we're looking at about 25 miles thick. And so this is a pretty remarkable thing, that the galaxy in this scale would be 2,500 miles across, 25 miles thick. And so that's where all of the stars are scattered within this 2,500 mile diameter across the continent to a depth of 25 miles. And so here's just another one that thinks about um, some of the other ways to think about how big 200 billion is. 200 billion is a really big number. That's a huge number. And so how do we make sense of this? And so let's think about this 200 billion quarters or 200 billion of something else. So let's go back to think about the bird seeds. So how many bird seeds did we, what was, what did we say the bird seed was? Maybe around 200. Right around 200? You know, that was a pretty good guess because I actually counted them. Ah. Oh, and then we got another little red thing. I don't know where that came <laughs> from, but uh, oh well. Magic. There it went away. So we have uh, 214. I actually counted them out. So, you know, <laughs> we got good guessers here. So where's the jar of jelly beans yeah, when you need them? So it's... Uh, Maybe that's dating ourselves. You go to the corner <laughs> drugstore with the uh, jar of jelly beans. Can you guess on the prize? So, yeah. So if you think about that, how much bird seed would you need if, you know, there we've got 214. How many bird seeds would you need? Some of you know the answer to this because you've done this, um, you know, apparently. And so the answer is that we take that football field and you take enough bird seed to fill the football field four feet deep. That's how much bird seed you would need to have 200 billion individual seeds. Four feet deep on a football field. That's a lot of bird seed. And yet, are the stars really close together? And so if you think about it, you know, the stars aren't that close together. And so what do we need to do with our bird seed to truly represent our galaxy. What do we need to do with our bird seed? <laughs> Skip says so, we, we need a lot of birds. Yeah, we need a lot of birds <laughs> to eat it. So it's uh, 
So basically what we want to do is we want to spread that football field of bird seed over the continent 25 miles deep. And so this is, here's another little one. So the are, and so if you do that, um, they're not close together anymore. The average distance between stars around the sun is about 6.3 light years. That means that the average distance between the quarters or the average distance uh, between the solar systems. And so if you have lots of solar systems in, the, uh, in our galaxy with a little bird seed star there in the middle. So the average distance between these solar systems is about 250 meters or almost the length of three football fields. So if you think of that on the scale of our uh, continent, that's actually fairly close. And yet it's so far away. We just can't uh, go there for the weekend. Um, although we keep watching the movies that tell us that uh, wouldn't it be fun if we could. Can't even go there for a lifetime. I know, I know. <laughs> it would take a couple of lifetimes just to get there. So this is a really remarkable thing. So space is really, really big and there's a lot of room in between pieces of bird seed and in between all those nice quarters. And so this is a really fun way to think about the scale of the galaxy and how our solar system fits into that scale. Now, one of the other ways that you can do when you're working with your, um, with your people at, uh, that come to your events is that there, there's a set of, of these, um, what do you wanna call them? There's that red thing keeps showing up. That's, I know. Um, and so you get a set of what, what ends up going on CDs and that this will actually, you can have these available and you can help represent how far away the stars are that you're actually seeing if we use the same scale. Uh, and so I'm gonna turn it over to Vivian and I'm guessing you would like me to stop sharing. Yeah, we can hop out of the... And then we'll come back to that in just a, a little bit. Awesome, so I think you can probably see us now. So these come in a set of uh, well, in the wet, in the toolkits, there you have to put them on the CDs yourself. But you can also print these online. This is a one of the CD covers. Just has an image of a galaxy. One of the common misconceptions here is that this is our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. We know this is just a representation because we can't take a picture of our galaxy. Speaking of trying to um, go for scale, we can't get outside of our galaxy. It's so large. But we're using this uh, galaxy to represent the Milky Way galaxy, and we have a picture of it. You can even just introduce this very quickly at a star party if you're at the telescope and say, so if you could put the solar system in the palm of your hand, say, um, the Milky Way galaxy would spread across the US. Um, and this is a very simple way. You can even do this in low light. It's designed for use with red light flashlights. But then what the cool part is, is when you look up and see something, these um, extra CDs here have the distances to many of the objects that you're looking at, which is, people ask that often. People often say, hey, how far away is that? And you could say that's 10 light years. That doesn't mean anything to somebody who's coming up to a telescope for the first time when they're trying to conceive of these large distances. But if you already have a scale model that's um, set up, you can say, I saw, um, got up really early and saw Orion the other morning. And I was thinking about this activity because one of the uh, CDs has Orion and Taurus on there. And it's got M42 on here. So on the scale of the Milky Way on the North American continent, the M42 is about uh, three quarters of a mile across. So it's big, it's like as big as a neighborhood. And it would be about 40 miles away. So for us, that would be, um, maybe San Jose or something like that. So you can actually use the things in your location to give people ideas of how it would be that nebula that you see in Orion's uh, sword, that would be the size of a neighborhood down in San Jose compared to our little bitty solar system that can be held in the palm of your hand. So that gives people a way to kind of start to imagine these vast, vast differences. Um, so that one's called What's, uh, what is that activity called? That's the our place in our galaxy. Yeah, so the first Telescopes one- Telescopes and time machines. Oh, that's next. <laughs> well, they're, they're kind of connected. Though. They are, they are, absolutely. So that's a really easy way to do that. You can carry these, they come in, if you get the, you have the um, toolkit, they come in a really handy slide 
set that these used to be for the visors of our cars. My car still has CDs, so I still have one of these. <laughs> um, so you can carry them around, just throw them in your um, telescope case if you want to use that to talk about things. Did you, are you sharing your screen? No. Nope. Okay, sorry, I didn't know. Okay, so then one other way to do that and a way for your visitors to get um, more acquainted with the things that they're looking at through your telescopes is this handy dandy little trifold called Passport Through Time. Um, and it talks about what people are seeing through the telescope and how long it has taken the light to get there and using that as a measure of distance. So it's got the three different realms, the solar system, the Milky, our Milky Way galaxy, and then the universe beyond our galaxy. And it talks about uh, moonlight taking just a few seconds to get here. Um, and things that you see in our solar system take between seconds to hours. The light from those objects takes seconds to hours to get here. Um, you can also talk about things that you see in the Milky Way, and those can take between uh, a few years up to thousands of years to, for the light to arrive from that object. So some of these are fun because you can talk about somebody who is, you can use uh, these CDs to talk about somebody, you know, who's maybe um, a few years old, nine years old. Let's, let's see, I just, I had a thought. Oh, I think, oh, the North Star is, the light takes the light about nine years to get here. So if you have a nine-year-old at your event, that's a really easy way to say, hey, when you were born, the light left that star and now it's gotten here. Correct me if I'm wrong on that nine years old. If somebody <laughs> knows better than I do, I'm pretty sure that's what I remember. Um, so, and then it talks about the galaxies that we can see outside of our Milky Way. And that's pretty much all you can see in our backyard telescopes that's outside of our Milky Way. So you can use this as a game to see if visitors can come up with at least one object in each category. You can, let's see. You know, all we have to do, we actually have the resource oh, right here. <laughs> the little dippers here in Polaris is 11, on our scale, 11 miles 11 away or 431 oh, light years. Much, too, much farther than so. that. Nine miles is maybe what I was thinking <laughs> of the other one. So sorry, yes. You'd have to find something much closer than Polaris, and nobody's that old yet. Um, so this is a, a simple way to have visitors remember what they saw through your telescopes, and also just kind of record and talk about the things that they have seen in the telescopes. So it's a nice one to do while you're observing. Um, and um, we often give away a prize, a sticker or something for those people who have completed the tour. So there you go. All right. Yeah. So there's actually a, a second set of in here. I'm going to go back to uh, screen sharing. Linda again. mentioned that Sirius is about nine years, oh, light years great. away. Thank you so Thank much. You. That must have been what I was thinking of. Polaris, <laughs> birth of Galileo. That's cool. Awesome. Oh, that is very hot. I like that. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this. Let's see. And I think that we're sharing now. Yeah. And so there's a, actually another set of, of CDs in there, or another set of stickers that could go on CDs that has to do with this universe of galaxies. And this is one of the, the, those times where we're shifting our scale. And so, so far, we've been fairly consistent with thinking about the solar system as being the size of a quarter, the galaxy being the size of a continent, and then thinking about how far you would have to go to get to these stars that we could see in some of the more familiar constellations. And so that's still using that same scale. But when we move out to thinking about the galaxies, we have to shift our scale. And so on this, we're going to be using something, there's a little bit different set of, uh, of these CDs, and it comes in in this, and so you can see all these. If you spread them out, you see that we've got a number of these different galaxies that are at vastly different distances. And so on this, let's see, the scale on here is, uh, let's see, what's the overall scale that we've got here? One million light years is four feet. And so on one million light years for every four feet, then what we've done is we've gone through and we've indicated on the back of these. And so basically what we've done is, is the galaxy is shrunk to the size of the CD. And then on that scale, these would be that far away. 
And so you would put the Andromeda galaxy eight feet away. And so that would be approximately two million light years. And then you would put these other ones at gradually increasing distances. So we went outside and we kind of showed how this would go. And so here we have one of our coworkers with, uh, you are here on the Milky Way. And then what we did was we have, we have two of these, the Andromeda galaxy, then I think it's the, the pinwheel galaxy that are fairly close to, uh, um, you know, the pinwheel's not that much further away. And so they'd be about eight feet away. And so you could have people uh, kind of spread themselves out. Then you'd have the next one. And so we actually compressed this from here. We actually ended up, didn't go the number of yards. And so Perry here should have been 16 yards away instead of 16 feet but I didn't want anyone to disappear too far up the street. Um, and so then we have some additional people holding some additional galaxies and you start to have a sense of how far away these objects are. And there we have Dave Prosper up there a little ways um, past uh, the tree. And so this is kind of a fun way to think about that. And then the, I'm sorry that this is so fuzzy, I ended up having to uh, do a screen grab on this. Um, but then some of these objects on here, the most distant object that you can see with the backyard telescope, uh, the nice quasar would be about two miles away on this particular scale. Then the Hubble deep field, the farthest away imagery that we've taken um, with engineered instruments would be 10 miles away to get to galaxies in the Hubble deep field. And so those would be, um, you know, if you have uh, uh, an, an obnoxious person that you want to, uh, you know, help demonstrate the scale, you say, yeah, go, go up there. And so on our scale here, and so back behind, you know, two miles would be up over a hill and, you know, you wouldn't be able to see them, but it's, it's kind of fun to, uh, you know, think about it. We really wouldn't do that. No. I think that'd be in the reservoir. Yeah, I'd be in the reservoir. <laughs> so this um, PowerPoint that Brian shared is, uh, he's made some modifications to it. Please take the PowerPoints that are on the Night Sky Network website, modify them for your own use, do what you will with them so that um, they work for your voice and for how you want to give presentations. Uh, a lot of these are he added those pictures for example of the people on with um all of these uh cds but most of that is is already up there and there's a a script that goes with it you can use those on the powerpoint um but we encourage you to uh edit and modify it will especially with Gaia just about to release a whole bunch of data i think oh is going to keep hearing more and more all these distances might be updated soon. Nothing astronomers love to do more than argue about precise distances. <laughs> Absolutely. So what we'd like to do now is hear from you about how you've used these resources in going about and you know helping your your the visitors to your events or to your meetings about the scaling activities. What other activities have you used to kind of supplement these? What are some misconceptions that maybe you've encountered about scaling? And what have you done to help dispel some of those or help people have a better understanding? And so at this point, we would love to have people uh, unmute themselves and so that we can actually hear from you. Uh, there's a note um, from Skip. He's used the 3D Orion activity. That's a really fun one. If you have that's time and one. people with um, manual dexterity, that's a fabulous way to show how all the stars are at a different uh, distance from us. I think we also, yeah, we have the Orion here and it will show you that some of them on, on our um, scale of the galaxy in North America, some are 20 miles away while others are only 1.6 miles away. Um, so they're vastly different distances from us, but they appear um, as constellations from our view. That's a cool one. And we and we have also used, we paint the, the beads glow in the dark paint. Yeah. So we can turn off the lights and turn on the UV light and then see how they line up from different views. Very cool. Thanks, Skip. Anybody else have other things that they've done with these activities that they want to share or hacks that they have come up with like those?
Oh, Ron has one. He says you can Google Earth has a ruler and you can stretch a line to the right distance on the uh, map. And that's nice if there are popular landmarks. Absolutely. I know I was trying to think of what's about 40 miles away from here. Um, it's good to think about before you get started. But the Google Earth is a great one as well to say, oh, that's right at the pier or wherever you happen to be. Thanks, Ron. And don't be shy. Go ahead and unmute yourself. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> yes, this is talk radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has anybody um, not tried these and wants to give them a shot? Have you? We we'd be happy to give um, tips for that too. If if somebody wants to give tips for people trying them for the first time. Oh, well, Linda's got a good one. She oh. made a foam model of a spiral galaxy uh, with push pins on it to show where the solar system is. Oh, Linda, That's you don't cool. have a, that handy, do you? I'd love to see that. Yeah. Send us a picture if you would. That's very cool. And one other thing, uh, Skip asked about um, what would the cosmic microwave background be if we wanted to do a demo of that. And I think it's just a little hair further away than the Hubble Deep Field CD. So it'd be 10 miles plus mm. a couple it's like I think the Hubble D feels 13.7 mm -hmm. billion light years and uh, that's pretty close to the CMB it's like the edge of the observable universe so maybe 13.8 yeah billion light years so <laughs> yeah that would be fun for uh, somebody to in investigate that a little bit and and come up with the uh, official numbers and I would love to know yeah Absolutely. I would love to update these with new pictures in color. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I think that might be on our agenda. <laughs> yeah. Well, so since somebody people, else... uh, indicated that they're just now learning about this and uh, Julia's uh, um, going to go on a search mission and see if she can <laughs> find whether they, whether you have it. So and if someone... you could also have, sorry. No, you can ahead. also have your club members who are photographers take some pictures of these different galaxies and then use those on the CDs. Nice. Oh, yeah. I would say also, these are not to scale the size of the actual galaxies. For example, uh, the Andromeda, if we were this big, this is us, the Andromeda would be more than twice as big as we are. So you could use a plate if you wanted to, but these work just fine. <laughs> You could even do a little uh, competition to see whose picture would end up going on the CD. Mm, nice. Cool. Not quite a, a, a calendar, but uh, still. Yeah. And if you, um, if you, someone has the toolkit or you'd like to just make use of these right now, you can also print all of these online. You just get sticker sheets of paper or it tells you the um, Avery label number, I believe. Um, and you can make these yourself, no problem. Yeah. Hey, Grace, we'd love it if you if you're willing to unmute yourself and to uh, share with us uh, audibly. Uh, you talking to me? Yeah. <gasps> yes, this is oh. the uh, foam galaxy. Nice. Uh, with the sun, <sighs> indicated by a yellow push pin. But Ooh. after explaining that the galaxy is a hundred times wider than it is thick, this is really not very accurate. So then I tell them that the CD here is actually a closer, more scale representation of, of our galaxy than is this. But here they get to see the spiral arms. That's great for people who have, um, uh, who have trouble seeing as well. That's nice to be able to feel a galaxy. Really nice. Grace, are you, are you willing to share uh, out loud? I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, we're asking uh, to see if Grace is uh, willing to share out loud what her comment. Oh, yeah. I, you can hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah, we, over the summer, we, we live in an area where we're often clouded out, so we have to come up with alternative uh, exercises or um, just different things that we can do in lieu of using like a telescope, especially because 
the kids get kind of disappointed when they can't look through a telescope and they're often restless. So that's why I made the comment about doing a planet walk with restless kids because when we work with day camps, they're all full of energy. And so it gives them something to do. And what I've done is that I've helped, I've had the kids actually plant stakes. We, we, we take giant steps and we count from the sun. We put a stake down. The, the planets I use are actually scaled to a six inch sun. So they're often surprised how small the earth is compared to Jupiter and Saturn. So it's kind of a good, a good experience. And we've gone out as far as Saturn because going much further would take us out of the city park. And but when we get to Saturn, the kids are always like, they turn around and they go, whoa, we're out this far. And kids are so imaginative that they can kind of, they can kind of go there where adults can't go there yet. And so it's really cool when, when you see little kids be that surprised. That's all. You know, I came up with an idea as you were talking about that, Grace, and, and it kind of takes Skip's idea of the 3D constellations. And so if you, and, and maybe I can say this simply, um, and so if you had a point, and then you, from that point, which would represent where we are here on Earth, and maybe send people out with uh, some... Um, mini mag lights in candle mode or something and have them go out to a particular distance. You'd have to change the scale a little yeah. bit, but have them go to a scale and have them arranged so that from your preferred Earth reference point, it would look like the constellation in the sky. Then you could ask the question, oh gee, if you went someplace else in the galaxy, would you see the same constellation? And so you'd have these people out there with their lights, where you would definitely see the same asterism or the same constellation from the Earth. But if they move to one side, or if they move in the midst of these stars, would they see the same constellation? And that would be kind of an interesting way to represent um, how, you know, these are our constellations. They're no one else's asterisms. They're our asterisms and not asterisms from another uh, potential solar system out there or planetary system. Cool. We have another um, scale model of the solar system. If you want to do that scale in our um, solar system toolkit that's scaled to a one meter sun and you create the Jupiter's whatever about this big about. Um, we actually use that a yeah. lot, but yeah, <laughs> but they're working it out. Meter, we can yeah. do the one meter sun for our school, like when we're trying to stay within a city park. Totally. I, guess, <laughs> I like the six well, inch we use, model. We, we actually use both, both, uh, both kits when we, when we talk about the scale model. Yeah, it's really neat to see those different scales all together. Ron, will you share that out loud, please? I love, the, I love what you just said. I'd like to hear it to make sure that everyone hears it in, in case they don't read it. Ron, do you, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, what do you want to me to say? Oh, Ron. Oh, yeah. No mic. Oh, it's, maybe okay. no mic, got okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, rats. Okay, well, Ron's got something really cool. He said that with the solar system walk, I tell kids to run at light speed from the sun to the earth. They always go way too fast. You have to take eight <laughs> minutes. It's so slow. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's great. Even at the one meter sun activity, um, that would take, you'd have to walk really slowly. <laughs> Getting, walking from Andromeda to the Milky Way, you're going to have oh, to take a, a few billion, a couple, quite a while. Years. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's really cool. I like that. You can either do, yeah, walk, speed of light, or... Uh, <laughs> Walk at the speed of Andromeda and us smashing into each other. You get to take a break after that. Okay, you do that. I'm going to go um, live the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what you could have is you could have a group, and then if they if they did that and if they collided, it was kind of like, well, how come we didn't run into each other? <laughs> so that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Two big groups of kids, one one set, one another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> could be fun though. <laughs> <laughs> 
we'll do the um, solar system scale in another one of these for sure. So, or you can check online at the same place um, if you just look up solar system or scale models, it'll be in there. Um, All right. Well, any uh, misconceptions that you've noticed about any of the uh, scaling activities? Anyone have anything that, that has kind of stood out over the years? This was a good one from Ram that he's mentioning using the kit, including those slides that show the size that compare planets to the sun. That's a really interesting uh, model too. And then we have another um, PowerPoint that sh compares the sun to other stars, uh, but there's a video that compares that nicely too. That's a fun one. I guess that's one of the things too, is a lot of times we model these things and we don't necessarily do them to scale. And so having the caveat that this is not to scale. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes that doesn't even make sense to people because they do have a difficult time with scaling activities in, in general. Um, I think a, a lot of us, we astronomers tend to have the kind of brains that can you know, think in those terms. We're fairly good at being able to shift our perspective and think outside of ourselves or outside of a system and look back at it mentally. And a lot of people aren't able to do that. And so as much as we can help them um, to be able to do that, um, we'll be good. And, and it's, it's a way of finding other ways to help them look at things from different perspectives. It's not easy. And you know we don't want to confuse people any more than what they already are. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a challenge. We had to figure it out ourselves. Once. Oh, we did. Luckily, we have lots of practice doing it, thinking yeah. about it. Um, but they can also figure those out as we go. As oh, they, yeah. They'll get better at it. The more I they had a couple things I was noticing. Um, yeah. I had one idea, which is just because I was at the gym a couple hours ago and I'm hungry. So I was thinking about the galaxy models and making them this scale, like just size with each other before you throw them out at the scale distance, mostly because they sort of look like cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I was thinking pizzas. <laughs> just like <laughs> different cookies and cinnamon rolls of different sizes. Like, and it's easy to take the cinnamon roll and peel it back to make it the right size. Yeah, and it um, does tell you the right size on the yeah. TV, so. But the other thing is, is I'm about people asking about scale and difference. Um, this is something like uh, people will discuss People often won't ask other people certain things, but they'll ask the friendly internet directly the most, some of like things that they don't, they're embarrassed to ask. Um, usually it's, you know, like bathroom stuff or whatever, but <laughs> um, uh, what is it? The number one thing on the Night Sky Network that I see every month when we get a little report on your, num your top sites is the top, by far every month is the article about, you know, um, Solar system, galaxy, universe, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Once in a while someone asks me, but considering the rate that I see people searching for that, um, there's a lot of folks that are still a little confused about which of those is what, and so this fits in nicely with all these activities. Yeah. Especially because even now, so, like science fiction's gotten a lot better about this than it used to be, but still they'll sometimes use like solar system and galaxy kind of interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Ooh. Well, I have, oh, noticed, Warner has a I have noticed that when I do these presentations and talk about the differences between solar system, galaxy, and universes, like over 90% of them do not know the difference. And I'm really surprised at that. But then I kind of am gentle with it and I get them to understand. And they are really surprised. But they never ask me. I just basically introduce that idea to them, and then they're then they are uh, more accepting to it. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I mean, it's it's even it's kind of funny. It's easy to forget that like knowing that there are galaxies and a universe beyond our galaxy is a fairly new concept. Even like not even hasn't even been a hundred years. <laughs> when they kind of establish that, like we still have some old books in our archives at the ASP that just talk about the Andromeda Nebula, mm -hmm. like from 1900, 1920. Yeah. <laughs> 1930, thank you, Todd. Yeah, that's a neat idea David was pointing out too about how far our signal has gone, about a hundred light year radius. 
somebody might have possibly heard us, how many stars would that get to, do you think? <laughs> That's a neat way to incorporate aliens. And when people start asking about aliens, there's lots of fun ways to incorporate them into scale models. I was also gonna say with really young kids, it might be good, I mean, even up to 10 years old, it might be good to talk about what a scale model is before you start on these. So you can talk about, you know, a scale model car or a baby doll is just a model of a baby doll. It's got some of the same features, but often they're a different size um, and they don't, it's not exactly the same. So we're representing some things, but not others. Like these are not hot. They're not um, stars. <laughs> it's just a picture of stars. Uh, so models are really good at representing some things and not others. And with younger kids, it's good to just have a brief introduction in that way to talk about scale models. That's exactly what I do. Um, it's, a, it's a really great way to introduce modeling and simulation in uh, STEM talks that we have. Uh, you know, I also use uh, the uh, yardstick for the solar system. Talking about the Earth-Moon scale, I use the yardstick as a good, anybody can do this, here's how you do it uh, with that uh, Earth-Moon scale. And then we just go beyond there when the, the Mars was close. Um, I had some marbles that are 3,000 3, scale size of the Earth, the Moon, and Mars, and get the kids to question about how far, this is how far away the Moon is, how far away is Mars, and uh, they never get that right. They think it's about 10 feet away from, from the representative size uh, Earth, and it's actually uh, like 200 yards at its closest than a mile at, at its furthest on that scale. Mm -hmm. Um, but then we go, um, I use the slides as I pointed out, and, uh, and we walk them from, you know, the sun all the way out to, uh, you know, as you did there on the Hubble Deep Field. So uh, it gives them a, a great idea of uh, exactly what that scale of the universe is. Awesome. Very cool. It's been so nice seeing everybody on here. It's great. And thank you for all these fabulous ideas. Yeah, this is fantastic. So I think that that's pretty well wraps us up for tonight then. Yeah. So you'll be able to find this webinar as along with many others on the Night Sky Network website in the outreach resources section. Each webinar's page will also feature additional resources and activities, including the links to the activities that we had here. And so we will post uh, tonight's webinar also on the Night Sky Network YouTube channel in the next few days. So let me turn off the recording here.